Hello, I'm Atubo George and I bless God for this opportunity to bring his words to you. Now this is a new week we've entered and I already told you this, the month of May is a very special month for you and especially for our nation, Nigeria. Praise God. I, I saw the Lord opening a new season for our nation. I saw that. I saw that in this month of May, I saw the Lord take out a veil and I saw things happening. I saw new things happening. I saw the old going away and I saw the new come. Praise God. Yeah. So I know, I know. <laughs> Praise God. That's the beauty of being a Christian. That's the beauty of being in Christ. That the Lord will visit you and share his mind with you. David said the angels were asking, what is man that you are mindful of him? What is the son of man that you visit him? <laughs> That's the visitation I'm talking about. God comes to you and tells you, hey son, this is what I'm thinking of doing. See, he said concerning Abraham, he said, will I hide from Abraham that which I have? Now, Abraham wasn't praying for Sodom's destruction. No, he wasn't. He was minding his business. God was on a mission. God was going to do something in Sodom. And then God said, look, I'm not going to hide from Abraham what I plan to do in Sodom. So he stopped by saying, Abraham, this is my plan. What do you think about it? Hallelujah. See, that's how important we are to God. So imagine those angels that were walking with God that day and said, look, we're going to Sodom, yeah. See, they left heaven. They're like, we're going to Sodom. Yes, sir, we're going to Sodom. And then on their way, they say, hold on, let's stop by to see Abraham. Oh, what, why are we seeing Abraham again? And then he saw Abraham and talked about Isaac being born and everything. And then he said, okay, we're done here. Let's, let's continue our journey. And he now paused and said, okay, guys, Will I hide from Abraham the thing that I'm planning to do? See, it's a scene that he will be a great man. Listen, when God, ah, yes, in this Let me show you this scripture. I know we're doing a study on First John, but see, when 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 the Lord is stirring something up in you, you got to say it. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. John, John, book of John. John chapter 10, verse 34. Jesus speaking here. Look at what he said. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, you are God's. Now, that's not the part. Many of us know this. This is the next part. 35 is, is what I wanted to see. If he called them God's, to whom the word of God came. Did you see that? <laughs> Who does God call gods? It said, to whom the word of God came to. You don't get this. If God can give you his word, it means he is calling you a god. If God, now, now understand what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about you sitting down in, 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 in a church service and someone is preaching to you or, or sitting down watching this message right now. Say, oh, okay, okay. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit bringing words to you. If the Holy Spirit brings the word, because that's, that's how we get the word of God. The Holy Spirit is the one that brings the word of God to us. So he's saying, if he called them gods unto whom the word of the Lord came to. So whenever the Holy Spirit visits you, now that's why the Bible says, what is man that you are mindful of, me, of him? What is the son of man that you visit, visit him to do what? To bring words to him. So that's how important we are to God. That's why I say this. If you don't receive the word of the Lord from him, you are really not a Christian. You, you've not known, now not because God is holding it back from you, because you are not paying attention to receive it. That's a problem. You are not paying attention to receive it. 
if you will begin to pay attention to receiving his word how do you do that by asking questions lord what what, what exactly are you saying right now <laughs> yeah now when, when you begin to do that i'll tell you what he will begin to speak to you now you don't have to be a pastor you don't have to be a prophet i get this you don't have to be having congregation that god has oh lord what what do i say god will not tell you okay this is what's going to happen then you come to your congregation and say thus says the lord no the fact that you know truth and you align your life with truth i was talking to someone recently and then you know and the person was just telling me, sir, the nation, this country is in a mess. This country, I said, hey, relax. It's about to change. And the person looked at me like, what are you talking about? I said, hey, we're in the month of May. Things are about to change. And the person said, sir, uh, uh, sorry, are you speaking this? You know, trying to know, are you saying it does say at the Lord or is there something that's going on that I don't know about? I said, this is what the Lord has said. It's about to change. Thank you, Holy Spirit. See, that's the beauty. Because we know his voice. We, do, we never get discouraged. That's, that's our secret. We never get discouraged because we follow his voice. We follow his pattern. So don't be afraid. That's the word I'm bringing to you this Monday morning. Don't be afraid. Rejoice. Bless the Lord. Don't let the news get into your heart. Forget what is going on in the news. Keep your eyes gazed on Jesus. He is the one who loves us. He is the one who's brought his word to us. And he is the one that is causing the change that we are going to experience. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We bless you. We just give you praise because you are wonderful. You are marvelous. Great is your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You love us so much that you will bring your word to us. And your word brings comfort. It brings assurance. It tells us where we're going. Jesus said the Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth. And that's exactly what he's doing. So listen, my friend believe in the lord jesus christ hallelujah you know that prophet said to them when hezekiah was uh, jehoshaphat was going for that battle in in second corinthians he says it sorry second chronicles he said well you know they, 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 they didn't know which way to go so they began to wait on the lord and then the prophet of god spoke and he said look in this battle you will not need to fight the Lord will fight for you. Send the singers in front. And I told them what to do. Jehoshaphat looked at that prophecy. <laughs> and then he turned to the people and said, Hey guys, believe in the Lord your God and you will be established. You, you will be established, yeah? Believe also in his prophets and you will prosper. That was a word of encouragement Jehoshaphat was giving the people because the prophecy didn't look like something that is so real. What are you talking about? We are facing a battle. You're saying send the singers in front. That's the same thing I'm saying to you. Believe God who has a great plan for your life. Believe in God who has a great plan for our nation. You, 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 may, look, you may have looked at the past and say, this nation doesn't look like God has any plan for it. But I'm telling you the truth. He does. And I speak as one who's been commanded to speak. He does. And you are going to see that plan very soon. Glory to God. Oh, we bless you, Father. Mm. Now that's why it says in everything, give thanks. Because this is the will of God. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's the will of God. So that's why we praise his name. We don't let anything distract us. We keep our gaze on him. It doesn't matter what the news is saying. It doesn't matter what, what, just, he, he said you will hear of words and you will hear of rumors of words. So it doesn't matter the rumor of war that you, or it doesn't matter the actual war that you hear about. Guess what? You are protected. He, he, he says, he that dwells in the secret place of the most high abides under the shadow of the almighty. Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm just full of joy. Listen, every as we step forward in the month of May, there's an excitement in my spirit. What excitement? Because of the word of the Lord that have come. 
Let's go. Let's go over to First John. Thank you, Jesus. Because because you're going to see the message tied to the study of First John, and then I'm going to just spend the whole day talking about something else. But First John chapter two. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Chapter two. Now we stopped at verse four, five, I think. So so we're going to read from. Let me just read from verse 3. It says, Now by this we know that we know him. How? If we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar. See? Simple. You know, that I, I love John. I tell people this. If you really want to be matured as a believer, Study the, the book of John and the epistles of John. Study it carefully. If you can line up with his message, then you're truly born again. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. So now he says, he says, thank you, Jesus. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar. Simple. No middle ground there. And the truth is not in him, but whoever keeps his word, truly, the love of God is perfected in him. So when you see someone keeping the word of God, what does it mean keeping the word of God? God has spoken to you and you are keeping it. For I just shared with you that this is the month of May and God has said something about our nation. God has said a new season is entering our nation. It's coming on our nation. See? I'm not going to go into specifics, not on this broadcast. See? But if you attend our prayer meetings, you exactly know, we'll go into details. This is thus said the Lord. This is what God is going to do. Praise God. So now, he said that. And then, if you love God, when you find those that are keeping his word, how are they keeping his word? How do you show you, you, you're keeping his word? When you see that, you begin to make plans according to what the Lord has sent you. You are keeping his word. Now, those who keep his word, he says, in them truly the love of God is perfected. So if God tells you, hey, um, maybe you're planning to resign where you work, for example, and you just, maybe you've gotten it bad, and you feel, I'm going to resign. And then the word of God comes to you and says, look, you're going to get a new boss in two months' time. Hmm. And the boss is going to be good to you. Now, you were planning to resign. And then God spoke to you like that. How do you keep his word? He said, okay, Lord, if a new boss is coming in two months, I'm not going to resign. He said, the boss is going to favor me, so I'm not going to resign. So you stay put. And someone asks you, hey, I thought you said you wanted to resign. Have you changed your mind? Yeah, I've changed my mind. Why did you change your mind? Because a new boss is coming. Ha! Ah, how, how did you know that? God spoke to me. A new boss is coming. <laughs> what if it doesn't happen? No, a new boss is coming. <laughs> now, what are you doing? You are keeping it. Why are you keeping his word? Because the love of God is perfected in you. You know God who spoke to you loves you. He cannot come and tell you lies. You don't lie to someone you love. Now, that's what it means. The love of God is perfected in him. That, that, that's why it's, it's easy for him to keep his word. Now, let's just take this. By this, we know that we are in him. See, when we see that it is easy for us to keep his word, we know that we are in him. We know that we dwell in him. That's how we know. You know a real child of God by the words he's keeping. Now, when you look at your life, you, you know sometimes God will just speak to you. Maybe you're troubled. Maybe you're troubled. And God says, hey, relax. Be still. I said, okay. Now, it doesn't mean the thing that will trouble your heart will not come. But when it comes, you remember, God says, I should be still. I remain still. All right. So I, I'm still. Now, what I think you are keeping his word because the love of God is perfected in you. Praise God. We're going to continue from here tomorrow. Listen, step out and show that God loves you and he has given you his word. So be at peace. Rejoice. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.